The Mycenaean civilization was the first powerful military culture of ancient Greece. The Mycenaeans came from the grasslands of Russia. Around 2000 BCE, small groups started making their way west into Europe and then south through the Balkan Peninsula. Finally, they settled in the lowlands of Greece. These herders and warriors from the mainland took advantage of the Minoans' weakened state to conquer Crete and assume dominance of the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean world. Mycenae has been the focus of many archaeological excavations and investigations throughout the last several centuries. Most notably with the work of Heinrich Schliemann, a noted anthropologist whose attempts to locate the legendary city of Troy helped to unearth a treasure trove of fortified palace complexes, burial tombs, and a cache of gold and bronze items. Mycenae was located on a hill with steep slopes to the north and a chasm to the south. Entrance was from the gentler slope on the west side, which had a narrow opening which could be easily fortified. The Lion's Gate was, position, was positioned above the main entrance to the citadel of, the, of Mycenae. The gate was about 10 feet wide and 10 feet high. The carved stone with the lions is about 3 feet high. It forms what is called a relieving triangle because the carved slab weighs less, much less than the stones to the right and the left. This reduced pressure on the lintel block below it. That block weighs two tons or so. The door was made up of two wooden leaves opening inward. The Mycenaeans built massive citadels with strong walls made of huge stones. The characteristic of the Mycenaean walls is that they are made of huge limestone boulders, which have been fitted together rather roughly. As these boulders are very big in size, the ancient people believed that it was the Cyclops who built these gates, as the thought it impossible for men to move such big rocks. That is why the walls are, called, are named Cyclopean walls. The Mycenaean kings built these fortresses on hilltops. Each Mycenaean city was remotely located and heavily fortified obviously due to their fondness for conquest throughout the Aegean region. In times of danger or attack, the people in the villages outside the palace walls took shelter within the palace. Its chief feature was the Megaron, or square room with a fireplace in its center. The king held council meetings and entertained in the Megaron. The Megaron was a unique feature of mainland architecture and could be found in the royal palaces as well as in many of the larger private homes. A Megaron is essentially a freestanding unit composed of a more or less square room entered at one side through a porch with two columns. The principal room was dominated by a round fixed hearth. Smoke from the hearth was allowed to escape through an opening in the roof. The ceiling was held up with four columns evenly placed in a square around the hearth. Against the wall opposite the entrance was a throne situated on a raised platform. The central hearth and the presence of the royal in the room was suggested to some that the Megaron was the location of Mycenaean religion. The Megaron was an early step in the evolution of the classic Greek temple. Shortly after the Mycenaeans settled in the lowlands of Greece, they were visited by Minoan traders from Crete. The Mycenaeans began to imitate Minoan gold and bronze work. They adapted Cretan script to their own language. Known as Linear B, it has proved to be the oldest surviving record of these people. The script was discovered by archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans during excavations in the Greek mainland. It was deciphered by Michael Ventris.
The majority of the clay tablets seem to be ancient accounting records composed of lists of materials and goods. They copied Minoan fashions. Most important of all, they learned how to build ships and how to navigate using the sun and the stars to travel on the sea. The Mycenaeans also began to grow olives. They made presses to squeeze oil from the olives. They used the oil for cooking, as fuel for lamps, and to rub on their bodies. They sold plain oil in large clay jars and perfumed oil in painted vases. Sale of the oil made the Mycenaeans rich. It also led to the founding of trading stations and settlements on nearby islands. Despite their success in trade, the Mycenaeans were warriors at heart. In battle, they used large hide shields with wooden frames and fought with spears and swords. Their leaders would fran wore fancy bronze armor. At first, the Mycenaeans fought one another. After they learned about shipbuilding and navigation, they outfitted pirate fleets and began to raid nearby islands. By about 1400 BCE, they had replaced the Minoans as the chief power in the Mediterranean. There were different levels of Mycenaean society. Many free persons did not own their own land, but farmed that owned land either by the palace or by the wealthy. These were tenants who lived on and worked in others' land. They would be required to give a certain proportion of their produce to the owner of their land and had to live off the rest. These persons were not slaves, of course, but would to some extent be subject to the will of the landowners, who could change their rent or even evict them. Other farmers were lucky enough to own their land. They gave the palace some sort of produce in tax, service in the army in the event of war, and perhaps also some labor of the sort necessary to build the huge walls and other engineering feats of the Mycenaeans, dams, bridges, etc. But they would have otherwise, otherwise been left largely to their own devices. Although they kept large herds of cattle, the Mycenaeans relied on hunting to get more meat. They hunted rabbit, deer, boar, wild bulls, and game birds. Women rode in with the men in chariots, during the hunt. When hunters were after big game, they used greyhounds. The game was captured with nets or killed with spears, slings or bows, and arrows. The Wanix was the term applied to the leader. He was expected to lead the army in war, and in times of peace, the palace kept track of all daily business. The Wanix was also the chief religious figure. The Mycenaeans were famous for their attack on Troy, a major trading city and competitor in Asia Minor. This attack probably took place during the mid-1200s BCE. At the time, the Trojans controlled trade routes to the Black Sea. They made money by taxing the ships that carried grain and gold from southern Russia to Greece. About 500 years after the Mycenaeans attacked Troy, a blind poet named Homer composed a long poem about the event. He called his poem the Iliad. Homer also composed a poem called the Odyssey, which tells about the wanderings of Odysseus, a Mycenaean hero of the Trojan War. Homer drew his material from the two poems from songs and legends that had been handed down by word of mouth. He then added his own description and details of everyday life. According to Homer's account, the Trojan War was fought over a woman. The king of Troy had a son named Paris, who fell in love with Helen, the wife of a Mycenaean king. When Paris took Helen to Troy, her husband formed an army and sailed after them. However, the walls of Troy were so tall, thick, and strong that the Mycenaeans could not get into the city. They had to camp on the plain outside the city walls. After ten years of fighting, the Mycenaeans still had not taken Troy. 
then Odysseus, suggested a way that they could capture the city. He had his soldiers build a, a huge, hollow wooden horse. The best soldiers hid inside the horse while the rest boarded ships and sailed away. The Trojans saw the ships leave, and they thought they had won the war. They did not know that the Mycenaean ships would return after dark. The Trojans tied ropes to the wooden horse and pulled it into the city as a victory prize. When they fell asleep, the Mycenaean soldiers hidden inside the horse came out. They opened the city gates and let the rest of the Mycenaean army in. The Mycenaeans killed the king of Troy and burned the city. Then, with Helen, they returned to their homes. The Mycenaeans did not return to peaceful ways after crushing Troy. A series of civil wars broke out among the people of the mainland. As a result, the Mycenaeans were weakened, and almost no fortress palaces were left. The Dorians entered Greece and conquered the Mycenaeans using stronger iron weapons. Thousands of Mycenaeans fled and settled on Aegean islands, or on the western shore of Asia Minor, which became known as Ionia. As a result of the civil wars and Dorian invasion, the Greek world entered into a dark age, which lasted almost 400 years. It was a time of wandering and killing. Overseas trade stopped. The people forgot how to read and keep records. The skills of fresco painting and working with precious metals disappeared. Greece was cut off from the Middle East, and the people had to create a new civilization on their own. They started over. Once again, herding and farming became the main ways of life. Local leaders ruled small areas. At first, the borders of the areas they ruled kept changing. In time, however, the borders became fixed, and each area became an independent community. The people of these communities began calling themselves Hellenes, or Greeks. They worked hard to redevelop their culture and learn new crafts and skills. The civilization they created lasted for over 1,000 years.